Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the July 10th, 2007 Transportation Committee meeting. We do have Councilman Favre who is out tonight. All other members are present. Uh, I will ask Councilman Sheikh Snyder if he would do the invocation and lead us in the pledge. Dear Lord, I want to give you thanks for all the fine summer weather that you've given us. Uh, I also want to thank you for the great people of Ascension Parish and all that they do for our youth and, and activities that we have uh, as we continue this summer. All the fighting people and soldiers that are overseas protecting us and defending our country, we give you thanks and uh, all of our hearts and desires are with you to continue what you are doing. <clears throat> also give us the wisdom to make uh, fair decisions for the people of the parish as we move forward uh, at, th at this time. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States, of, America of, America United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have a, a public comment period. Uh, I ask everybody to try to keep it to three minutes. You may sign up with Ms. Cinnamon right here. If you wish to uh, speak at any item that we have on the uh, agenda for tonight. Uh, is there any chairs edition tonight? No two-thirds editions. Then we'll go to number five. Uh, we do have a PowerPoint by Industrial Fabrics Incorporated. <coughs> Welcome. Okay. Um, do I just use my PowerPoint? Okay. You got it. Uh, glass grid is a product that's used in rehabilitating roads. This is a real brief overview. We, we didn't want to get too technical tonight. We're going to keep it to about 10 minutes just to give you all a quick brief overview. Um, glass grid is a, is a geo grid system that was developed to address the rehabilitation challenges of reflective cracking, distress on highways, streets, parish and state roads, airport aprons, runways, parking lots. And in terms of kind of a general idea of what this product is, glass grid is to asphalt what rebar is to concrete. Glass grid makes asphalt three times stronger its normal strength and pound for pound is stronger than steel. In terms of just a few areas of uh, where the 25 million square yards has been used around the world, uh, airports, bridges, roads, you see that you know England, Canada, Louisiana DOT, in New York DOT, TxDOT, Nevada, Ohio, California is not on there, but they use a lot of it as well, just to kind of give you an overview of who uses the product. In terms of some of the unique aspects of the product, fiberglass construction is what it's made of. It's environmentally friendly. It can cre increase asphalt pavement life by up to 200%. The open apertures allow more surface adhesion. It's quick and cost-effective installation. It is a, a pressure-activated adhesive, which makes it self-adhesive to the pavement and can be easily milled up for reuse as a recycled asphalt product. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but basically if you look on the, um, um, the left side, you see where a crack can come up through the pavement, and if without the grid, it'll migrate on up into the top, and the concept being that base is what really fails in an asphalt overlay. It's not the overlay itself. The base normally gives away, and then it, it surfaces up. But on the picture on the right, if you see where the you have the grid inserted underneath the pavement, it redirects the, the energy so that it can't make it to the surface, which will stop the overlay from cracking. This is just a shot of the uh, airport in New Orleans. Uh, we did a couple of years ago, uh, 1999. Uh, what they chose to do was rather than do a complete, the, the whole entire apron, they just did the joints. We have two different products. One is a 8511, 
which is primarily for the complete road system, and 8512, which is primarily for joint repair. It's double the strength in one direction. Uh, as you can see, they pull it out and lay it down, and it's self-adhesive. This is what it looked like over the bad areas of the joints. Um, glass grid has an open grid uh, structure with 70% open area and is only uh, one of two open reinforced grids, which allows the aggregate to interlock with the grid once it's laid down. What we do in terms of a typical uh, rehab is uh, it's milled and then the, we like a level up needs to be clean and prior to the placement of the product where the surface is clearly uh, clean, clean and not too dusty a, a tack coat is uh, recommended to ensure sometimes the overlay bonds to the level up uh, typically a contractor or an engineer will mark out the area to be paved and therefore gives the glass grid install of the area to be covered with glass grid the glass grid we don't like it to be exposed overnight so that it's not uh, damaged with uh, traffic. If it is, we like for it to be coned off so that no vehicular traffic can get on top of it and hit brakes. We normally don't put out more in one day than we can cover up that day with the contractor. Product comes five foot wide. This product makes the rolls very easy to handle. With one tractor, we typically can install up to 25,000 square yards a day. Uh, and uh, the asphalt placement production is very high. Typically, the contractors are nervous that we're going to hold them up, and once they see how fast we install it, uh, we're never in their way. Um, it is a self-adhesive product. The product is activated by uh, uh, a, a line of weighted rubber tires located on the back of the tractor, which presses it down to the pavement. As you can see, paving operations, the grid can cope with typical paving construction traffic it is important that the asphalt delivery vehicles don't hit their brakes because we it, it could damage the grid and also do not perform sharp turns on the grid any damaged areas we always uh, to ask them to replace that by cutting it out and replacing it but in terms of the overlay thickness we like a minimum of an inch and a half the grid will not move during paving uh, and as such does not pose any problems during overlay operations. Uh, it's, it's really a strong product and it, uh, the adhesive works well so that it doesn't move under the paving operation. Once the asphalt is in place, then they roll over the top of it. This is another project in Jefferson Parish where we did, uh, I guess this project's now about five years old. This is one that was in Point Cape Parish. Uh, we typically install the product because we like to make sure that it goes down proper clean surface and good adhesion. Uh, this is West Esplanade down in New Orleans installed in 04 and that's it. I appreciate it. We have brochures if y'all want some uh, with some samples tonight. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming and bringing us this information. Uh, Mr. Bob, uh, I would like to see that if you could explore this, this thing, it does sound like a good product. Uh, one of the things that we have been wanting to work on is crack and seal programs, things that would, would help us uh, make the, the life of the road, you know, a little bit stronger and longer. So if you can bring, you know, bring us some information and feedback from your expertise at the next meeting and maybe we'll discuss it again at that time. Okay, be glad to. Thank you. Cinnamon, you can put that on the next, next agenda for our meeting. Okay, we'll go to item number six now. Uh, which is street signs and weight limits. I have here uh, a stop sign request at Plantation Creek, Creek and Grist Mill for Councilman George Valentine. Mr. Bob, do you have that information? I really, other than the request by the uh, uh, Councilman Valentine, I, I don't have anything on the issue. Motion Mill. Install the uh, stop sign for the Councilman's request. Second. I have a motion and a second to uh, install a stop sign at Plantation Creek and Grist Mill. Any objections? There are no objections. This needs to go to the full council. Item number B, additional street sign limits and speed, speed limit reduction from 25 miles an hour to 15 miles an hour in Lakes at Santa Mar subdivision. Councilman Jerry Savoy. So moved, Madam Chairman. I have a motion. 
Second. And a second. Motion by uh, Todd Lambert, second by Dempsey Lambert. Any objections? Discussion. Discussions. Uh, Mr. Turner, what is the recommendation? I know we had talked before about reducing below uh, 25 miles an hour. Well, I'm very uncomfortable giving you a recommendation on any regulatory sign that I have not studied as an engineering analysis. Uh, historically, in the past, these signs have been installed at the by based on petitions from residents and on approval of the council. So I guess I would like to continue that process. And uh, if I if I have to take a position, I need to make an engineering study for me to evaluate it. I, I would like to make a substitute motion that we allow Mr. Allow Mr. Turner to look into it. And uh, you know, I do know in the past that we have had uh, required uh, petitions correct. and and a review by DPW and so I would like uh, that to continue or or some recommendation otherwise and, and that's my motion I'm gonna I'm withdraw my motion I will withdraw my second. second so is anybody gonna and second his motion to send it to send it to, send Bob. It to Bob. <coughs> I second his motion. Uh, probably on the next two this is something that we really need to consider uh, this is where policy really needs to come into play and then we don't have to have you know so mr bob if you have some recommendations and some policies regarding these type of issues we would like to discuss that too at the next council meeting okay the my transportation meeting. yeah from my standpoint my criteria is national standards for the uh, manual on uniform traffic control devices that would dictate as to when stop signs are appropriate and and speed limit uh, signs uh, are established and I'd be glad to give you that to uh, allow you to uh, establish policy in that area okay with that being said we have a speed limit reduction from 25 to 15 miles in Thanks. Manchac Highland subdivision and mr. Valentine Thanks. is here okay. thank you madam chairman um, I appreciate the uh, committee uh, talking about trying to create a policy, but while we're still <coughs> operating under the old policy, I do have petition for the stop sign that you approved earlier and I also have a petition for this particular one. I cannot speak for Mr. Savo. I do not know if he does, but under the, the present policy that we have in place, I would not want to uh, uh, subject the, uh, the residents uh, of this uh, subdivision who requested this um, close to 95% uh, that the reduction be uh, agreed to. I'll make that motion, uh, Madam Chairman, that he has a petition and went through policy. And Second. Well, he has his petition, what we yeah. asked him for. Councilman. And, and, but what we've always done in the past, we've taken the peti petition and given it to DPW, and they have done the, uh, the traffic uh, speed limit and given us a report on that before we make a decision. Uh, I have no... <coughs> no objections either way on this but I, I i just think we would you know we should continue with what we've been doing uh you know res very respectfully for mr uh, valentine but uh this is what we've been doing in the past and i'd like to continue doing that uh, we've always gotten a, a sp put the speed limit i mean uh, i'm sorry the speed bumps out there to find out how fast it, the people were going and get a true read out and report and then we can make a decision uh, and so I would like to continue doing uh, what we have done. <coughs> and I'll put that in the form of a, a substitute motion. Uh, <coughs> we don't have a second on the substitute motion. Uh, we uh, You still want to discuss this one? Okay, Mr. Lambert, Todd Lambert. Yeah, I, I see Mr. BJ here. I, I might want to address it to him. In the, in the past, I thought we... Once we had a petition signed, we sent it to DPW for approval. That was the policy. It wasn't so much DPW to go back and look at it, if I'm not mistaken. BJ, you aware of that? I'm not. Would you repeat that again, Todd? In other words, basically, uh, once we get a petition signed, that was really all we needed to reduce the speed limit. It went to DPW. I don't think they did any surveying or research on it after that or did they 
did they go out and put speed bumps to check the cars, the speeds, and yes, y'all did do, do yes. that. Okay. Right. I'll second Kent's motion on it. On the substitute, send it with DPW's recommendation. With, with the petition. With the petition. With the petition as a recommendation from this council to do the sign, but with DPW's. <coughs> hold on. Hold on, Ms. Chairman. The same policy that we no. have in place now. <coughs> well, yeah, Ms. Chairman, yeah. I've had quite a few of the same calls and, you know, to reduce the speed limit. He, uh, Councilman Valentine has done his homework. That's the right. petitions have been signed. Mr. B.J. Lambert has the, uh, have y'all recorded the speed out there at these locations? You haven't? No, sir. Okay, well, I'll have to, I'll have to withdraw. Councilman Valentine. I'm, I'm going to challenge Mr. Lambert on the fact that they 100% do this because I am aware of several instances where this was done in a, in a subdivision. Are you talking about citizens in a subdivision, 95% want to maintain a 15-mile-an-hour speed limit for themselves? I, the I mean, I don't understand the problem here. They for, want it for the safety of their children, for the safety of the community. They have a few people that are coming in, either visitors or separated spouses, that maybe will leave on a Sunday afternoon, afternoon and speed out of their subdivisions, and they want something done. I have been on the phone with the sheriff calling on some of these subdivisions, and the sheriff had suggested that particular thing, lower the speed limit. You're going to get the people to go slower. I mean, the people live there. I don't, I don't understand the situation. I, I understand if our present DPW would like to do it differently, then that's fine. Let him work on something. But in the meantime, we need to stay consistent on how we've done it in the past. <clears throat> Let's do well, I just wanted to make the statement that, uh, you know, setting in at 15 miles an hour, the, the problem the sheriff has is they usually don't, they usually give a ticket when it's 10 miles past uh, the speed limit. So the thinking of the individual is if it's 25 miles, they can go 35 miles. You know, so if you lower it to 15, you should get the speed that you want. And if you don't, then they can ticket them. They can't ticket them otherwise. So that's just something for you to think about, too. This is one of the biggest complaints that as a council person, with all the problems that we have, that I get more calls on is the fact that people are speeding in subdivisions with the concern for the children at play because they're limited to play uh, play time and and play space and and bicycle uh, uh, riding and stuff like that and I've had children in in the subdivisions in my district hit by cars so councilman uh, shakes not thank you uh, and and I'm just as concerned as everyone else for safety and, and subdivision and everything I am very concerned about that. <laughs> Uh, we presently have a, a speed limit that has been there for some time at 25 miles per hour. Uh, we have brought it to the attention of the public uh, in a proper way. Uh, we need facts and figures from DPW about what is actually happening out there. Uh, and uh, we have gotten that in the past. And I, I very respectfully, I don't think one month of getting the information, I, I certainly look forward to next month passing this and supporting it and going forward with supporting evidence and, and, and moving on. Uh, and, and yes, that's what we've done in the past. And so uh, if, if we want to change policy, let's change policy. But if not, let's just continue what we have done. And if it's an unwritten policy, that's what we've been doing in the past. And I'd just like to continue. Uh, Councilman Todd Lambert. I'm still in agreement with Mr. Valentine that I don't I don't recall them coming back once we give the petition and us seeing any updates or you know reports that has never came back to this committee. We have moved on it from this point and moved a, on. If there was a petition. Once we had the petition signed, you know we we doing what the rep the the people the citizens in that area want and that's you know and then the law has to enforce it but. Uh, 
I still don't recall any coming back to the board. And I'm going to withdraw my motion and move forward with this. I'm going to withdraw my substitute motion. As I recall, that's how we did it, too, that we were told that we had to have 100% or right at 100%. No, and you're absolutely right. We were told we had to have 100 percent, and we don't. And so, therefore, everyone should get the information because we, we, yes. and and it, and I acquiesce to the local councilman in 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 his district for what he wishes, and and that's fine. Uh, but uh, we, we've issue. we've done it in in Southwood and and some of the other places uh, that they had out there. Uh, because BJ has brought us the information about how many cars were going so fast and so on and so forth. And so, uh, you know, I, the only time I remember what, what, what we, I acquiesced well, to you. Okay, I, was, I just want to just inform you. Yeah, but, but this is the thing. You know, when we have a subdivision, why is it put 25 miles an hour? Because it's our policy. We don't go in and do no traffic study to see exactly whether it should be 35 or 45 or whatever. It's 25 miles an hour. Pelican Point, the biggest subdivision in your, your district, it's 18 all through that, or close to that, right? So, I mean, they got 18. They did that for a reason. The reason is to try to do, just like Ms. Fontenot said, to maintain at least something below 20 miles an hour to make it safer for their kids. That's all I'm asking. So, you know, I understand about the studies and all this, but when you have citizens that will take the time to sign a petition guaranteeing themselves that they will drive that speed limit, then I don't see a problem with it. It's for the safety issue. Okay, so we have the resolution and the regular motion to accept the speed limit reduction from 25 miles to 15 in Manchac Highland subdivision on a Manchac Highland drive off of Alligator by, by Road. Any objections? I'd second that motion, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Any objections? There are no objections. I, motion I, I objected this time because of the. Mr. Shakespeare objects. And you know, to go back to the other one, we didn't have a petition. So if, if uh, Mr. Sawa wants to bring us back with the petition, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll entertain that one next time again. Now, uh, Councilman, uh, uh, item D, uh, we have down here other, Councilman Jerry Sawa. Councilman Sawa asked me to request that this, this uh, committee send to the full council a resolution to do a letter to DOTD requesting additional signage in the curve in Highway 431 between Highway 429 and Airline Highway at 61. I motion that. Yeah. Second. It's a different. It's we have a motion in the second. Uh, if you need this, you can. <laughs> if you want the motion, you can have. You can have this. Second. Any objections? There are no objections, so we can send the, uh, the motion to the full council. Okay, item number seven, update on parish and uh, state projects. Mr. Ken Israel with URS. Welcome, Ken. Thank you, Madam Chairman, council members. Um, I passed out to you all earlier the monthly project status update just a couple of the items um, that are of note. Westworthy Road, the right-of-way maps are nearing completion. We should start the appraisal process and the acquisition process during the month of August. So that, excuse me, the latter part of July, 1st of August. So that one should be moving along, should be plans are well finished, completed. We just need to get right-of-way acquisition in one small area. Joseph Ariel Road, I believe Mr. Turner is going to cover that later. We do have the final plans and specifications and estimate from the engineer. Um, the 2005 road widening project, we have one road left to complete. We're currently working on AC Road now. The contractor was hoping to do some paving the latter part of this week. With the rains we've been having, most probably won't get it done. 
So maybe next week he'll get the last, the back portion of AC pay, repaved, and then hopefully within about two weeks have the front portion paved. So we're that front portion. There's some realignment of AC Road, moving it over a couple of feet. So that work is continuing. As far as the 2005 road widening project, we have made a punch list on all the other roads that have been completed. There is one project on rain that is going to necessitate going back out and doing some additional work. There's a crack has developed. Looks like there's some floor light that has come up through. For your information, most probably will be a change order in the neighborhood of $35,000 or such to correct. We will have to go back in, remove the asphalt, remove the base course and floor light material and come back in with new material. This is something the original borings did not show any floor light in that area. When we mixed cement with the existing dirt, it's swelling, causing a crack, and there's um, you can actually see the, some of the white coming up through the asphalt at the crack. So it's there will be a excuse me a change order for that one. Yes. Why uh, it, it didn't work out as planned? I mean, they yep. didn't do the thing. They so just did the the plans. Why the, do we have to have a change order? Why don't they just fix it? Well, you're going to have to increase. It's not their fault. It's not the contractor. Well, this is some information. When he did his work, and he walked away from it, it was correct. Okay. And there, there's been a reaction between the floor light material and the cement that was mixed in with the, the dirt to cause the swelling and causing that crack. Okay, well that's, thank you. Um, uh, the LA 63-621 interchange at I-10, the plans are at the Department of Transportation Development for final processing. Hopefully, the department will be able to take bids on that contract the latter part of this fall or early winter. As far as state projects, information I have, um, the department is just about finished with Airline Highway. They've done the final paving. They've, they're doing some striping, cleanup, dressing up of the shoulders and things of this nature. The department has started the process of putting together a set of plans, starting the, the planning process for work on LA-42 at the two reverse curves. This is a new project that's just being started in the department. That's all the information I have. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. About the 205, not the 205, I'm sorry, the LA 73 and 621 I 10. Uh, when did you say that was going to start? The bid is supposed to be at right at this point in time, is scheduled for, I believe, either October or November. And how far behind are we in this? I don't know how far behind. Because, because but the this was supposed to be done, I think, by July. Yeah, it's been a while, but the the plans finally got to the department from the consultant, and now the department is going through their process of reviewing the final plan, preparing proposal, advertising, and other functions that they have to do. So DOTD has the final everything. As far and, as and the, the last I was to the bid process. The last I, time I talked to DOT, they have the plans and they are processing so it. The, the whole ball game. That's what I want to clear up. The whole ball game's in their corner now. At this point so in time, from this point on, it's their baby. Unless they find when they start preparing the proposal, they find a major changes or they find some corrections that need to be made. They they'll return it to the consultant. But still, it should be ready f for the latter part of the year for bidding. Thank you, Councilman Todd Lambert. Yeah, Mr. Kent, we we haven't talked about the 06 construction program. Uh, 
I thought we were going to be ready to bid this project out. Uh, that, that's an Mr. item. Mr. On Turner is going to care, talk okay. about that later. Okay. I didn't want to take his. Okay. Anybody have any questions about anything else on here? Uh, 04 intersection. The 04 intersection, the Councilman uh, Shakespeare. The consultant is working on those. He has, I believe, gotten at least verbal approval from the department. He's putting together his final plans. And we'll have to do some right of way acquisition. This and particular project, that's the other six that was on the original list. Yes. Is this uh, now including the one that we added to this project? No, I do not have um, the phase three, which is prepare or Roddy Road at Airline. I did not include that in this, but that will be a separate project. Okay, that, that's, that's fine. Now, anybody else? We're going to talk about that later. Okay. Miss, Mr. Madam Chairman? Yes, Councilman Dempsey. I'm trying to find Seabro uh, at the intersection improvements. Did we have Seabro uh, Road on there? I don't believe so. It was not part of those that were approved, no. They may be. Zebra on 73 does not? No, it was not in this original group. It may be in the 2007 program that Mr. Turner has. I thought it was it was earlier than that. It was, it's not I don't. I don't recognize the name. I'd like to address the administration with this and see if they have. Yes, Mr. Lambert, you may do so. Uh, Zebra Road and uh, Highway 73. Uh, there was supposed to be a light looked at there with the uh, the turn lane. Do we know a traffic signal? Right. I'm not aware of it. it was supposed to put a light there. I'm not mistaken. This was something that was taken in uh, oh five, oh four, oh five. It was. It's a bad intersection there. If you don't mind, Mr. Turner, would you check into it and see if uh, possibly something was dropped on there? Sure. Thank you. Did you want to come in? Okay. I thought it was a part of the 621 intersection, but I'm not sure that it was. Oh, I don't believe okay. that it was. I think they, it was a separate okay. item, but it is It is something that is highly important. I, I believe. Okay. <laughs> I recognize Seabro now. It, it's at right six, there by McDonald's. Yes. And, I and believe all there is some work. It's a as, nightmare. As part of the 73 621 project, the state, uh, there is some work at Seabro Road. Is and there? Se yes. Okay. I, sorry, I did not recognize just see what you can the intersection. Find, just see if you can find out anything more and just kind of bring us bring us back to that because I will. that's something we don't want the ball dropped on. I will make sure it's part of the plan and what, I'll let you know by the full council meeting exactly what's going okay. on at that intersection. Thank you. That sounds real good. Anybody else have any other questions? <coughs> Mr. Israel, we thank you. Okay, uh, item number eight will be turned over to our RDPW Director, Bob Turner. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> the uh, first thing that I'd like to do is to introduce you to uh, our newest uh, public works employee, a new uh, young engineer that's been a great help to me and, and I envision that she will be adding uh, significant uh, uh, to our ability to produce plans and actually to move forward. Uh, behind me is Miss Jackie Bowman. She's a registered professional engineer, a civil engineer, and she's got uh, several years of experience in subdivision design and as we get on down here, I'm going to give her credit for a, a couple of projects that uh, she's only been here two weeks, but at the same time, we've uh, actually uh, completed the 2006 uh, program, and it's really uh, uh, as a result of her efforts. And so I wanted to bring her and, and uh, introduce you to her. And we welcome her. The other item, uh, before I get into the road and weed control, I did want to tell you that 
uh, the acting planning director and myself have been appointed by the President Hughes to serve on a committee for the Baton Rouge Loop project. This, and we had our first meeting today where we met with the stakeholders and, and other uh, participants of the five parishes that would be affected by a Baton Rouge Loop. The corridor has not been selected, uh, and so we'd be a part of that selection process, and it'll take place over the course of this next year. And the reason I bring it to you is because Ascension Parish will be an integral part of that loop process, and it's extremely important that we uh, participate and that we communicate the needs of our parish uh, to assure that the uh, loop is compatible with uh, our transportation system. But uh, Ron Ziegler and myself will be uh, on that committee. With that, I'd like to uh, re uh, bring your attention to the road and weed control report, uh, item 8A. And uh, related to that, uh, I would also like to uh, inform you that the council has officially passed the state mowing contract and we are under contract with the state now and we're actively mowing uh, state roads uh, as indicated by that contract uh, and so I expect uh, uh, our state roads within the parish will uh, start looking a little better fairly soon. Uh, in addition to that Yes, ma'am. Councilman Lambert has a question. Mr. Bob, you don't know how many rotations we have done already on the parish roads. Huh? I know that the, the grass is still very tall as we speak. No, I, I'm sorry I don't. I can find out. The only thing I would tell you, and I, it's really from my personal observation, I'm having to mow my yard twice a week because the humidity and the temperature is such that grass is just growing like crazy. So. Uh, it's very possible that the grass is high, but still yet we've made uh, uh, a couple of passes or so. And I noticed in a certain areas where it looked like they were sprayed but not cut, and the grass is tall well, and dead. Yeah, and that would be unusual that we would have done that. We so should have mowed and then road. sprayed to retard the growth. Yeah. Uh, I, it's possible that... Uh, Somehow we've done it backwards, but I'll the, be glad the, to the check that. The appearance of it is not a track, you know, tall, dead grass. Yeah. Basically. Okay, yeah. thank you. I, I, I have that same uh, question because it seems like the grass is usually three to four feet tall when they spray. And then it, it takes an awful long time for it to die, and then you get these big brown weeds instead. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's not what we want to do. I, I, uh, we want to mow and then you spray that that's retards the growth. Correct. And so that's the proper way to do that, and I'll check to see uh, the process. Uh, the that process we're doing it in that manner. Uh -uh. Uh, the other question that I want to ask, uh, uh, you said that we're beginning to mow the state roads and stuff. Airline Highway is uh, is finally getting refurbished and that is a state road that's going to probably need to be cutting. It's also one that is usually has a lot of litter on it. Mm -hmm. and, and I do know that we had some money in the litter budget mm -hmm. and I don't know what's being spent in it, you know, or what kind, or even what's going on with the litter right now. Uh, I would like for you, if you could, to look into that and if you could get with whoever's in charge of litter yeah, these days. Right to see if possibly we could maybe at least kind of maybe beautify the main corridor through Ascension Parish. Yes, ma'am. I'd be glad to. Thank you. Um, would you like me to go through the individual items or you have the report in front of you if you have any questions regarding that, any additional questions, I'd be glad to, to answer those. No, he's still on A. He's asking about these items. Everybody cool? Okay, we can move on to uh, item B. Okay. Item B is a, uh, a, uh, a task order contract that is the Director of Public Works that I issued to SJB Group uh, Incorporated uh, and to 
to determine exactly where we're at on the right-of-way acquisition of the West Worthy project. Uh, I have some concerns and questions regarding our, our right-of-way acquisition on all of our projects, and I just need to get a feel for where we're at, what we need to do, and how we need to move forward. So I needed a expert a consultant to sit down and go through uh, all of our records, tell us exactly where we're at, what do we have to do to move forward, and just how many tracks do we have to acquire. So that's what this Some is. Second. Item C is a uh, renewal of a professional engineer services contract for uh, uh, PEC, Professional uh, uh, Engineering Consultants Corporation. It's a standard task order contract to enable us to have the services of uh, additional engineering uh, company uh, if we uh, need it, so and I'd recommend exactly. approval. I have one question. Uh, I thought we were getting all the contracts to come due at the same time at the end of the year. One of the Why things. Is this one in the middle of the year? Well, actually, uh, I'm trying to add more to our engineering consultants the availability of it, and also the particular expertise that they might have that we do not currently have. Um, and that's that's the reason for so this. So, what is the time for this one to come back up again? I guess that's why I'm asking, since we're trying to be consistent, that even if we're doing this one now, do you want to uh, do this one through? Remain of it. This, this is for the balance of this year. The balance okay. of this yeah, year. and then it would come up for renewal, renewal with the remainder. Okay. Okay. Any and objections I to this motion? Then this can go to the full council. Actually, item D is uh, the same thing. T. Baker Smith Incorporated is a new engineering company that has just located within the parish. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. I have a motion by Dempsey Lambert, a second by Todd Lambert. Any objections? There were no objections. This can move to the council. Item 8E is a uh, correct, uh, it's a uh, contract renewal. Previously, they were Soil Testing Engineers Incorporated. They had a name change. So what we've done is uh, entered into a contract with them under their new name. So, so this is essentially no change. I have a motion by Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Dempsey Lambert. Any objections? No objections that can move to the full council. This next item is one that I'm extremely pleased. Uh, when I first came to work for the parish, it was very clear to me uh, from the council and from the citizens that we needed to move forward with projects as quickly as possible, one that was extremely close to being done and uh, wasn't quite there yet was Joe Severio Road. Uh, Councilman Lambert uh, scheduled a couple of public hearings that went extremely well. We had good reception from the public, and uh, but I'm very pleased to uh, ask for your concurrence to bid the Joe Severio Road project. So we have completed Chair. plans Second. and specifications, uh, estimates, this is a project that's in the 2.5 to $3 million range, uh, but we're ready to go. We're, we'd like to bid this. I have a motion by Councilman Dempsey Lambert and a second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Any objections? Well, w when will this be able to start, Mr. Lambert? Well, we'll uh, proceed to bid this through our purchasing department uh, in the next uh, 30 days. It has to advertise for a period of time. Uh, my guess is that the contractor would be starting probably around the 1st of October or something like that. And, and construction time? Construction's going to take about nine months. Okay. Uh, construction, unfortunately, when you have a road that uh, you have to uh, keep traffic on the road, people get in and out of their homes, the construction time takes longer because you have to do it half at a time, uh, still keep the road open so and looking such at about as that. this time but next year. Yes, sir. Okay. It'll be next year. Good. So we have a motion and a second. Are there any objections? We proudly send this to the council. Yes. 
Thank you so much. The next item, uh, I introduced you to Jackie Bowman, and she's uh, primarily responsible for this next item in that our 2006 road reconstruction program that we had done in-house, Jackie has taken that from, we just couldn't quite get over the hump. We were like 90% completed, and, and within two weeks, Jackie has wrapped this up, and we're bringing this to you with a recommendation that we go to bid on the 2006 road construction program. I'll make that motion. Councilman Todd Lambert has made the motion. I, I second. Can't text on a second. Sir. Mr. Todd Lambert has a question. Mr. Bob, can you get us a copy of that list? So we're, it's yes. been a while since we've seen it. So Yes, uh, and, and I apologize for not sending yeah. you a, a comprehensive so list of that. To that effect would be fine. Thank you. Yes, that's what I would rather you email it so that everybody has it, you know, in ahead of time and also make sure that's in the packet. Yes. Because in case they don't get it by email, they will have it in a packet. Okay. Good. We will have that for you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. you. Good. There are no objections? And we move this project to the full council. And again, uh, Mr. Bob, what are we looking at? Same type of scenario for Essentially, this type of a project uh, probably can go a little bit quicker. It's a... Uh, mill and overlay similar to what we saw on the 05 uh, project under R.J. Daigle who was a contractor on that. Some, some streets I think will go relatively quickly. Others will for one reason or another uh, take a little bit more time but uh, I think Jackie's done a good job on the design. She's going to be there to uh, guide us uh, if we have some difficulties on the construction she'll be there to uh, correct uh, any uh, thing that we need to correct and uh, I feel very confident that we can move forward quickly. Could you give us a, a tentative schedule as they come out with a schedule as to when the, you know and we know that's going to change and everything but it just gives us something to go by yes uh, about when things are being done and uh, as people ask us we can say at that point okay uh, this is when it's scheduled. Yes, I, I will, we will get that from the contractor and we will present that to you. Okay. Bear in mind that uh, circumstances as time goes on, yeah. that may change, but we'll, we'll give you. And we appreciate we, you moving forward on this. Thank Ms, you. Mr. Bob, this, this would be something uh, that I would like to see, just like uh, Mr. Israel brings us from the, uh, the, the parish and state roads that we have projects on, since these are kind of in-house uh, type at least the 206 one is. But if you do something similar, you know, from from month, month, to, month. to month so that we know what what progress is being done so they don't get put on a shelf somewhere that we can keep up with them. Well, these won't. Uh, we're going to go to contract. We're going to have a contractor out there. In fact, Mr. Israel will probably report uh, these as a part of his normal of his uh, reporting stuff. process as Great. we go along. So. Uh, I, I envision that his list of reporting will get a little longer. That'd be great. Appreciate that. There are no objections to this, so this one's going to go to uh, full council. <laughs> Yay. Item, item, H. item H is the turn lane policy and dedicated uh, dollars. And, and uh, I, I believe that uh, Chairman uh, Fontenot added this item as a discussion item of, of kind of where we stand uh, on dollars. And I wanted to, uh, I'd given you a couple of handouts as to where I have determined from the finance department we currently stand on our road construction uh, fund. Um, currently encumbered in uh, projects like Westworthy, Joseph Ario, uh, uh, Roddy Road, and, and others, including the 2006 uh, project, we've got $15.3 million currently encumbered uh, with those projects. When you take our fund balance, which is uh, at the beginning of the year, which was slightly over $23 million, and you take the 15 uh, from it, we're, um, uh, and, and have some additional revenue, 
basically we have available for projects a little over $11 million available for unencumbered uh, projects. Now that, that actually includes uh, $2.6 million for the 2007 road program. So uh, when you total that up, it totals up to uh, a little over, it, about $13.6 million would be available for uh, road construction projects. I guess, Mr. Bob, what, the reason I put this on here was for these councilmen to discuss and, and decide on, you know, we know that turn lanes work in moving traffic. They've been a tremendous bonus to this parish. And so we need to move forward to try to identify which turn, which turn lanes are needed, where the most traffic is, uh, where the most relief is needed. Uh, I know we have some areas in Highway 42, just other places and stuff that, that need this type of thing. So what I was interested in doing was getting this committee to, uh, to basically uh, decide if we would do like, if we would start a policy of maybe doing two to three turn lanes a year and then decide on an amount, uh, you know, yeah. So that we would have something set in that every year you would be presenting us with two or three turn lanes at a certain, you know, figure that we can move these things forward, and uh, that was what I put it on the uh, the agenda for. And any of you guys have anything to suggest or or talk about? Uh, this is a good time to do so, so that we can uh, uh, add this type of project yearly. If I might add just a little bit of discussion on, on that item. Uh, clearly the state roads within the parish are the backbone of our transportation system. And the majority of the need and the majority of our traffic is on the state road system. And so uh, I think you're going to find, no matter who conducts a study, that the uh, uh, need for turn lanes, left turn lanes and right turn lanes, will be on the state road system. And, and those where we have intersecting state roads, actually it's going to be needed on both of those. So you might have a situation where you would have a uh, left turn lane on one side of the intersection, a left turn lane on the other side, or you might have a need for left turn lanes all the way around the intersection. So the cost for something like that varies considerably a lot depends on what's adjacent to it because in most cases you need additional right of way when you add that much additional pavement. So, but you can start with probably a minimum of $50,000 for a single turn lane and go up to $250,000, $300,000 for a full blown intersection uh, where you would have to acquire right of way and, and maybe even install a traffic signal. So you talk, you're telling us, uh, uh, I guess I'm, I'm asking about what figure uh, would you suggest that we try to shoot for yearly? I mean, we may do a $50,000 one and a $200,000 one. I mean, if we've got them identified, you know, we may have to yeah. do one major one and one minor one to get the figure. But yeah. I guess what I'm asking, uh, and, and maybe you can agree, that maybe Mr. Bob should uh, should maybe work on that and yeah. come up with a number that he can recommend to us. That, that, that's what I was thinking. That you take that. Uh, th this is one of the things as we improve the intersections, we're going to move traffic. Uh, yes. And, 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 uh, that, and, and instead of, uh, I really don't like the idea of calling it turning lanes. I I, I like to call it intersection improvements. It is. It, it You're be, exactly right. It, it may be four lane in an intersection. Yeah. Right. It may be uh, whatever. Good if time. we have something planned uh, for that road in the future and we don't have enough money for the whole road we may do two or three intersections that will improve it and co combine it with state monies uh, we can greatly improve the flow of traffic and I the best example of right now is, is Highway 70 the bridge road when they did the, the intersection improvements uh, right there at the St. James the 3125 and, and at 22 uh, they
they closed off 44 and there's probably three times more traffic now yes. and, and and it is congested but it's moving and you're, uh, it, you're it, exactly it's amazing right. how how much just that improvement has yeah, done so most most of the uh, congestion that you see on the highway systems is at intersections the the road itself usually has a much greater capacity to move traffic until you get to the intersections and your bottlenecks almost always occur at your intersection and if you are going to target your money then I would recommend we target it at the intersections because uh, by adding the turn lanes and to enable cars to either get on or get off the roadway relatively quickly will greatly increase the uh, efficiency and the capacity of the intersections and when you evaluate a section of road uh, and I think I talked at one time about a rating of uh, A, B, C level of service. Uh, generally, your intersections will control your level of service for that section of road. It's not going to be the stretch between the intersections. It's going to be the intersections themselves. So I think that's a wise choice to uh, be targeting intersections. Now, uh, I don't know what's well, and, occurred. And, and, and the balance between maintaining our roads now we're taking in a great deal of subdivision roads and everything so we're going to have to be maintaining our roads and and improving uh, intersections uh, so that's something we look you know for some recommendations as to if we would do this we would have this left over and so on so if you could uh, give us some scenarios that we can make a decision on I think that would help us a great deal we can move forward okay I'd sure be glad to I just wanted to comment that uh, 70 and 22 went very quickly and did make a very big difference yeah. there. I mean, we we didn't even hardly notice the uh, the construction in the construction part, you know. Uh, so I'm very pleased to see that happening, and uh, anything that you can do to bring us, uh, especially the inter the interset the intersection improvements at this time, because as Mr. Shakespeare said, uh, we are taking in a lot of subdivision roads, and they're fairly new roads, and and our intersections are outdated. So if we can get a jump and get the intersections fixed before we have to start repairing all these other roads, we, we may have a little extra money to do it now. Is what I'm saying, and so we need to move on it. Okay. Madam Chairman. Yes. <clears throat> And I know we we're talking on state roads, but I'd like to focus back on some of our parish roads also. We're finishing up with the uh, baseball season and stuff, but at our parks, I would like to see at each park at the intersections maybe some turn lanes. You know, most of them are parish to state roads, but um, there are a couple where you parish to parish road, and uh, also include those mm -hmm. in there. Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, the next item is speed humps. Uh, I know this is an item that has been discussed in the past in the parish, and I'd like to bring this issue forward again and uh, talk in support of that. We had a significant discussion earlier about speeding in subdivisions and the need and desire of the community to reduce the speed for the safety of the residents. There are a number of ways to do that and one of them is to have a sheriff's officer out there and and ticket everybody that goes more than two or three miles an hour over the speed limit. That's not practical really and uh, they they just cannot devote that much attention to it. Plus, the downside of that is that the very individuals that you're trying to uh, help by reducing the speed are probably also those that are the neighbor, either the neighbors or themselves that are getting the speeding ticket. One method to of a number of methods is to have a speed hump. A speed hump basically is a external or mechanical control of speed in the sense that if you drive at a certain speed there is no problem with going over the hump you don't hardly notice it uh, however if you drive 10 miles an hour faster than what it's comfortable of going over there it you you get jarred 
so it tells you that you're going too fast and you need to slow down. The city of Lafayette had used a number of different items that or a number of different uh, uh, vendors to do uh, speed humps and they settled on one that they call it's called speed cushions by traffic logic a firm that that has that in your packet I believe you have a a uh, drawing or a uh, picture of what a speed cushion is and it's actually three different uh, uh, recycled rubber humps, if you will, and they're spaced in such a manner that your larger vehicles, your emergency vehicles such as police or fire trucks primarily, long wheelbase vehicles, can uh, span the hump and not go over, not have to go over them. Because the majority of your difficulties uh, come down with uh, long wheelbase vehicles going over these uh, short short uh, wheelbase vehicles really don't have a problem but long wheelbase vehicles do so you, you don't want your fire trucks having to go 10 miles an hour for example over a hump to get to the fire at the end of the street you want them to be able to go at an adequate speed to get there quickly and so this allows them to do that with that <coughs> I have uh, uh, asked our purchasing department to uh, purchase uh, two of these for two locations to try as a pilot uh, in the, within the parish. And so uh, those uh, hopefully will be here in the next month or so, and, and I would like to install those at a location where the public is uh, desiring that uh, we do some speed control within their neighborhood. And at the same time, I think we ought to carefully talk about a policy uh, of where we might install these and where we would not install them. And so uh, I'm open to suggestions that you might have, but uh, um, I would also like to see us move forward with at least a pilot program. Councilman Jackson. Uh Yes. Uh, I, we had talked, discussed this before, and the Homeowners Association of Pelican Point has requested uh, that they would be glad to be a pilot program, so uh, I would like to uh, offer them uh, an opportunity, uh, if you wish, to put one in uh, into Pelican Point if you're looking for a place to study this. Uh, one of the things that, uh, and uh, for your consideration, is that I've heard is that since this has uh, been around for a while and there have been a number of requests that we go back and research uh, if we would had some previous requests that we might look at, and I think Cinnamon had uh, uh, researched uh, some, and as far as I can tell, we had one location, or do you recall? Okay. Yes, okay. Mr. Bob, I had kind of asked for the research because early on I had brought in P Prairie Oaks. That was the one that a child had gotten hit by a car, and the people in that subdivision were requested, and I think it even... Uh, talked about maybe the homeowners association helping, uh, you know, with the expenses. And at that time, uh, we were told that that they were not legal to put, you know. And so that was one of the first ones that I remember in our term of office that that had requested, and it was after a child had gotten hit. And so uh, I'm not saying that you have to go back and do that one now, but I do think that we do need to have a policy. And, and and I was wondering how expensive this this uh, hey, would be. This, this particular location or this particular item, the speed cushions, are essentially $2,800 each. <coughs> and so, and they're movable. So if, uh, if by chance uh, we install them in a location and the public decides that, gosh, it wasn't what we expected, uh, we don't want this, uh, we can move them. And well, so the reason I was asking because they had been subdivision associations saying that they would help to pay for this if they could. I mean, the, the only, safety issue was yeah. so important to them. So that's something that we need to think about. I was also wondering, <coughs> you know, if uh, certain types that, that, that we could develop a, a, a means for in, in the subdivision codes that certain type of subdivisions with certain type of areas 
that the developer would have to install it, you know, depending on the length of the street and stuff. I mean, obviously, they're not going to fit just anywhere. Right. If you got a lot of stop signs, you don't need them. Yes, you do. <laughs> you still the, need them? Yes, and the reason I say that is that uh, your stop signs are really not speed control. <coughs> your stop signs are for access onto the road safely. In other words, you uh, pull up, and if there's a, a vehicle on the side, your stop sign directs who goes first. But if you pull up and there's never anybody on the side, you, you tend to run that stop sign. And in fact, you'll get your greatest complaints in a subdivision with unwarranted stop signs who will tell you that, uh, that people are running the stop sign all the time. And the reason for that is because it's an unwarranted stop sign. So uh, I need to dissuade you but from the thinking that... the stop sign does slow them down because they will slow down to look to see what's coming before they go Yes, in. but also what they do is they make it up on the other end. In other words, when you speed up after you slow down, you speed up faster than you were doing to start with, trying I'll to, get you. quote, make up lost ground. But, but uh, uh, clearly uh, an item like a speed hump is a effective uh, manner. And there are others. Uh, uh, traffic circles are, are very effective across the country. We might be wanting to think about those. There are such things called sidians, where you actually reduce the width of the road, which uh, causes individuals to slow down. So there are a number of different things that can be done for traffic calming devices. But I think speed humps is probably the first step that we need to go in that direction. And, and I'd like to get these two down and, and get the reception of the public. I'm a little... I, I guess I don't want to go into a bidding situation where one subdivision has is relatively well off a good active homeowner association. They got some money uh, versus a homeowners or a, uh, an area that has speeding problems, but but no homeowner association and, and as a result no money. I'd like not to have that competition between those. I think we. If we can select them uh, for other reasons other than uh, the homeowners uh, are willing to pay for them. Now, I, I clearly want them to desire that the hump be there, but I really recommend that we not ask them to pay for it. I guess I was just asking Mr. Bob because if some wanted to, you know, that they that if we did, if they were legal and stuff, and sort of like what. Mr. Valentine did tonight. Yeah, it's their subdivision. They want to control the speed in it or whatever, I, and we don't necessarily think that that's what they need to to be, and we don't want to put up our money. You know, would that be an option for them to be able to uh, to to if they foot the cost? I I feel that it would. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The so. the item when you spoke to it as to whether or not it was legal or not, uh, speed humps and traffic calming devices of all sorts are utilized across the country as a common, extremely common facility now. And as long as you're not putting a hazardous hazard in the pavement, you're not, uh, you're not creating a liability. Uh, clearly a hump that uh, people pass over without any problems whatsoever, say at 20 miles an hour, and they, if they go over it at 60 miles an hour, uh, the liability is theirs. They're, they're speeding way beyond the, the uh, safety of the road, and the hump is uh, uh, just a small part of that uh, concern. But clearly they're legal, and uh, uh, many communities uh, place them. Many communities in, uh, in Louisiana have them, so uh, we're, not, we're not breaking new ground. Good. Anybody else have any questions about this? Then you're going to work on this. Yes, ma'am. I, I wanted to bring this to you, and, you know, if you told me forget about it, I'd, I'd forget about it. No. But if no, you uh, <laughs> thought that it was no, worthwhile, I'd like to go yes. forward. To do that. You need a motion on it? I, I, I'd move that we put them wherever DPW suggests. And, uh, and, and please report to us about what the results are. I will. I think it's extremely important that, that I come back to you and the public themselves and to report on what we, what we see. $2,200. Okay, we have a motion and a second to move this to the uh, to the council for Mr. Bob to proceed with the pilot uh, of uh, placing these speed cushions uh, to see about their feasibility. 
No objections. There are no objections, but we'll move this to the council. Thank you. Thank you very much for your support on that. Uh, the next item is an item that is um, really close to my heart because I'm at the age of where I guess that I really feel that this item is extremely important, and that's road striping. Uh, I'm at the point now where if it's raining and it's night, I really have a great difficulty seeing the road, especially in areas without street lights. And what in the past we've done some minimum uh, striping, uh, really in the range of thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars worth of striping on our parish roads. And and uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to enhance that. And I've had a number of concerns, in fact, uh, quite emotional. Uh, concerns about n uh, newly resurfaced roads that didn't have uh, edge line. We had center line striping, but no edge line striping. And edge line is extremely important uh, at night, and, able, and especially if you think about where we're not able to widen our roads as quickly as we want. So we're dealing with relatively narrow roads, open ditch, and so edge lines are extremely important. So. What this is is an item to include in the 2007 road construction program. We would add a contract for doing striping only. And in this particular case, we've listed uh, a number of roads. Uh, do you remember how many we had? It's, it's a 74, 75 roads. <coughs> that we would like to stripe. The estimated cost is around $160,000 for this well, I move to item. accept the road list as presented uh, with the roads in the striping project list here. And you second it. I have a motion, in, motion by Ken Chaston and a second by Todd Land. But I do have a question. Uh, Tiggy DePlessis was one that I put on there uh, for striping. And the reason is just what you said. It's a very dark road, it's a very curvy road, and it's no shoulders at, at, at all. And I did have a, a, a relative, of, uh, a first cousin of my daughter-in-law that got killed on that road because of, of this condition. So uh, I, I was wondering, you know, I know I put it in, so yes, I was wondering. Yes, ma'am, and where it is, it's on the, uh, uh, Turn lane, 2007 turn lane and road widening list. Uh, it's a uh, on there as widening. When we widen those, we will stripe we those will stripe as part it. of that contract. Yes, ma'am. That's all I needed to know. I'm comfortable with it now. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Abbott. One other one. Uh, Norwood Road. Did we look at the uh, edge line on it? between uh, I, Joe Severio I, I and... I know where the road's at. Yeah. Uh, Could you check that. into that one? Just check it, just look at it for me. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yes, sir, we will do that. Yeah. Uh, Councilman Lambert, you, you understand on the road striping that we... Uh, it, it, we can't do very much with an 18-foot asphalt. Uh, I understand, but I have a, a lot of elderly folks that live on that road, and it's, it's real dark. So anything that we can get, it would be a help. Now, one of our concerns on striping is that we not, we have a road that 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 we can uh, stripe and and not take away. We don't want two vehicles by by reason of the striping that we push them together right. uh, uh, on a narrow road. So we we really are trying to be extremely careful. Uh, on those that, that we stripe, because actually you lose pavement width when you stripe the road. Right. Mr. Bob, is, are those those roads necessarily, do they do they necessarily have to have the white line through the middle? I, I mean, if it's the edge that seems to be more the problem. Well, if you, if you do the uh, edge line, you really ought to do the center line. Uh, and the center line, we can do the center line and not do the edge line, uh, and it's uh, I've not ever done the edge line and not the center line. Uh, just, just, just a thought. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
the okay, next. So we have a motion and a oh, second to send this, uh, to approve this uh, road striping project list at one hundred and fifty-five thousand seven hundred ninety-one dollars and ninety-four cents. <coughs> Any objections? Then we send this one to the full council. We would expect to put this one under contract relatively quickly. This is, the, I mean, the, essentially the investigation, quote, the engineering is done on this item. And so we need to, uh, we can move forward. It's a specialty item that a uh, contractor that would do uh, asphalt paving may not necessarily be the individual that would do your striping. So by letting this contract as a separate item, we can actually move it forward relatively quickly and I think have a very good reasonable bid on it. We thank you. This next item is my biggie item. <laughs> it's the 2007 preliminary road list for your review and consideration. As you recall, over the past couple of months, we have been gathering up uh, your request for uh, roads that need work, either uh, surface deterioration or a, a widening uh, or such as that where there may be failures in the uh, surface that we need to take care of. So, uh, And from that, then, we took that uh, list, which was uh, several hundred roads, and from that we had uh, one individual, and, and that's Mr. Lambeth here behind me, to rate those roads uh, so that we had a consistency of rating of them. And we rated them into priorities one, two, and three. And so what we've done is bring to you all of the priority one roads that we uh, have. And there are 72 of them, I think. 70 of them that are priority one roads and various type of work on them, sectional patching, mill and overlay, uh, in some cases uh, reconstruction, uh, uh, and that's, that sort of thing. And the uh, total estimated cost for those roads is $7.8 million. Um, in addition to that, there are other uh, costs that are not necessarily included in here. These are construction costs. You would have engineering design costs that would have to be added. In some cases, uh, uh, there may be some additional right-of-way that have to be acquired. You straighten the curve a little bit, add some additional pavement width. And so uh, when you add up all of those uh, items like that, the cost The cost for the uh, total estimated cost of the roads plus the turn lane. I have a, a, a list of uh, turn lanes attached to that also. And these uh, turn lanes are those that, that uh, were requested by council members and added on uh, intersection improvements, uh, widening of uh, various roads, uh, um, primarily uh, turn lanes, uh, and that totals a little over $3 million, $3.375 million. Uh, when you add all of those, those three items together, the priority one roads, the turn lanes, and the striping, it's $11.4 million. Um, and then when you add potential engineering cost, and right away cost you're slightly over fourteen million dollars uh, worth of estimated cost. We currently have about thirteen point six million dollars available for construction of these roads. So where our needs clearly uh, outstrip our ability to fund. We're we are very fortunate and I don't want you to get the impression that I'm I'm critical of the fund balance uh, having 11 million anything 10 million or more is absolutely wonderful that we 
have. It's just that we need to spend it wisely and we need to spread it throughout the parish the best we can. But we are about $800,000 uh, over budget, if you will. And it's my recommendation to you, uh, there's a number of things that we could do, but one of them is a improvement that on the turn lane is Muddy Creek Road. That's currently the most costly project that we've uh, uh, estimated for the 2007. It's, it's kind of like a Joe Severio type project. And, and I've estimated it almost $2 million. Uh, and what I guess I'd like to recommend is I've talked to uh, the two councilmen that uh, this is in their district, and that's a concern to them, uh, uh, and, and it clearly is needed. But the greatest need on Muddy Creek is the surface itself. It's not, it does need widening. I'm not trying to tell anybody that it doesn't. But what it absolutely critically needs is good surface, a better surface. So if we were to do a uh, overlay without the widening, we could cut that cost in half. And so as a result of cutting that cost in half, we're back in budget. And so I guess that's my recommendation to you, and, and uh, I would hope that I would have your support on that. I would, I would offer that motion, yes, Madam Chairman, to take that out. There's an overlay. I, I do have a, uh, we have a motion and a second, motion by Dempsey Lambert and a second by Todd Lambert. Uh, Mr. Bob, I was just wondering how road widening got with our turn lanes. I mean, we talked tonight about having a turn lane project, and I see that you've got some turn lanes down here. Yes, uh, we do. You know, uh, which I was thinking that we would, you know, maybe do two or three of the most important ones, maybe a minor one thrown in it once we decide how much money we're going to spend on. I mean, you know, so that we would have a project every year. Uh, that's what we kind of talked about tonight. Uh, I do think we need a turn lane project, you know. So uh, I'm just wondering, you know, guys, do y'all want to do this whole project thing? here now this time and, and do like you said keep the widening part on here I mean keep the uh, take the the widening of, of this one road off of here and put it with the overlays is that what y'all want to do yeah, that's, 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 that's what, what we want to do one. that's yeah, the motion uh, and, I, and I also would like to point out to you and I think that that the uh, uh, East Ascension drainage board there was cons uh, uh, discussion regarding Muddy Creek and the history of the bridge being low, and, and that this does not address that issue. However, uh, when, when and if the bridge is raised and the road is uh, improved at that time, it would be widened to a full standard. So it's, it's not like we're going to give up on the widening of the road. Uh, it's just that we're addressing the most critical fix, need yeah. at this it's time. And right. uh, if, I, if I just may talk uh, uh, regarding the turn, the uh, turn lanes and widening, widening projects in themselves are really complicated. I mean, Joe Severio, which I'm very pleased that we're ready to let, was a project that started in 2001 or 2002. So, you know, those are long-term projects that take quite a while. The, it's my understanding, and, and what I'd kind of geared to was that the uh, annual road program was uh, as much as anything else a maintenance program with uh, a few items here and there but not significantly big projects so I think it fits very well into your con your thoughts about a uh, turn lane uh, every now and then uh, but since we had reasonable fund balance the turn lane projects are and, and much see, larger than they would normally be. I, I see that, Mr. Bob, because, you know, we're already in July. If we just get, even get this thing started, we'll be into next year, and we'll have money coming in again next year. So uh, That's correct. I, That's I, I, I'm in agreement that while we have, you know, this type of money, let's get some projects moving. Questions? Councilman Shakes not them. Uh, and, and my question is, should we, uh, since we uh, appear to be all in agreement that we should do the overlay, should we move it to the 
rolled over. Yes, in fact, I've got one other thing I'd like to talk to you about. Sure. And is that the well, and, uh, 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 before you go any further, Mr. Yes, Bob, I'd like to offer that as a motion that we officially move it to the road overlay list and put it add it to that list, the Muddy Creek. Second. So that it will be officially on the list and off of the turn lane list. Uh, okay. Councilman Shakespeare has made a motion to move Muddy Creek to the official overlay list, and Councilman Shakespeare, uh, uh, Dempsey Lambert has second that and this this list hasn't been accepted all we're doing from this board is, is transferring it right now right so I, I think that we're all in agreement that we should do that right so we're adding it to the list that we will approve later correct yes and and the cost will be to be assigned yeah you, you don't have a cost. yes i don't i don't have a cost it'll approximately be one half of yeah. the amount that we have about a million you said it'll it'll uh, the uh, uh i'm i'm sorry i thought you were talking about the one project the muddy creek itself the muddy creek yes. yeah it'll it'll be around a million dollars around instead million, of two right. million okay okay this is a um this this list is as you all are aware uh, has been subject to uh, a number of changes and and in some cases some last minute changes and I guess as a result I I'm, I'm really asking you to add four other projects to the overlay list uh, uh, and I, I can't tell you how they dropped through the cracks but I, I was just made aware of them uh, very recently and I'd like you to consider those. Have uh, they been prioritized already? You have yes, they that? have. They're, okay. They'll be priority one roads. Okay. And uh, three of them are in the city of Donaldsonville. With, uh, uh, for some reason, we left these three off in Donaldsonville, but it's Division Street from St. Patrick Street to Highway 3089, Clay Street uh, for 350 two feet and I it's uh, I, I'm sorry I can't pronounce that uh, that road it's T H I B A U T drive what? What is Tebow Tebow oh, drive oh and Barcelona drive from highway one to river road and there is another one a small uh, uh, relatively short road uh, Simpson road that that I would like to add also. Do you have a cost on it? Yes, the, I do. The three in Donaldsonville are $106,000. Simpson Road is $45,000. And I would like to add those to the list. So moved. Second. How much is Simpson? 45. 45. Okay, so. I second that. I have a motion by Todd Lambert and a second by Kent Shakespeare to add these roads to the official uh, 207 road list to be approved later this evening. Any objections? There are no objections. Thank you very much. Um, as I had told you earlier, Miss um, Jackie Bowman uh, was really great in moving the 2006. Uh, projects forward for us to where we could make a recommendation to you that we take bids on that and as a result of that and discussions that Jackie and I have had we would like to do a certain number of these roads on this list in-house again uh, I think we're in a much better shape than we were uh, in the past for doing in-house work and so I have uh, like to recommend that uh, we contract out some of them but we we also uh, uh, do an in-house design this in-house design would be about uh, 35 or 36 of those roads uh, basically mill and overlay relatively little surveying that uh, again it's kind of like our striping contract that the engineering is basically having an expert go out and look at the uh, uh, road and, and make analysis of, of what's needed and then proceed to a contract. And 
if that were the case, we could do almost uh, one and three quarter million dollars of this work in-house with staff and we could probably before the end of the year have these roads under contract. Again, it's my effort to find ways to move forward as quickly as we can. Uh, okay, I have a motion by yeah. Councilman Chickson or you want to change with, that? With an amendment to the to the list that we have here, uh, as we spoke earlier, Mr. Uh, uh, Turner, uh, uh, the, the mayor of Sorrento had called and said they recently had a grant, and so DeBate Street and Hackberry Street will be taken care of by Sorrento, so I'd like to scratch that off of the list. And I'm sorry and, that, that I missed that. I was aware of that, and yeah, we took it yeah. off. We This evening, uh, or right, this afternoon, a, a lot of different uh, lists were floating by and, and, and unfortunately and, uh, I got one that with that those I did two exceptions I'd like to accept this list as uh, in-house design road list uh, make that a motion I, I was just wondering uh, Mr. Shakes not before we go any further is there a second before we discuss I go ahead and second okay uh, Todd's going to second it so we can discuss we just added to this road list this 2007 road list and this list this in-house list is the same. These these on this in-house list are on the 2007 list that we just add, that we just added. Well, we're going to take them off, but we just added these. Is it more feasible to do these smaller roads in the city of Donaldsonville in-house also? Yes, ma'am. We, so we we can do those in-house. We'd, to we'd like to do that. 207 list. We need to add them to the 207 in-house list. Yes, ma'am. And that. That will be added to my motion. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I feel uh, very confident that uh, we can uh, do that uh, relatively quickly and we will be able to move a number of these roads yeah. forward. Dempsey, are you okay with this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cinnamon, we are taking the, the 207 list that you have that's in-house and we're adding the ones that he just gave us from, the Don from Donaldsonville uh, to that list. Okay. Can you uh, can you go over them again, Mr. Yes, Turner? I sure yeah, can. Let's make sure we have them all right. We are uh, proposing a recommendation of a priority one listing of roads, uh, totaling a little over almost eight million dollars, included in that list are the uh, turn lanes and also the striping contract. In addition, we are adding three roads in the city of Donaldsonville. That's the in-house list. For the in-house, yes. Okay. And also Simpson Road in the amount of $45,000. Uh, and we Simpson would do those in-house. In uh, Simpson, all of the ones you just stated were going to go back to in-house. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Mr. Bob, we've got uh, we've got here several uh, several different projects that we're going to handle separately. Uh, you're going to give the striping to. Striping would be to a single contractor. A single I recommend contractor. that it be to a, a specialty uh, contractor that uh, has striping ability and. So I guess what, what Mr. Shakes not a, you want to clarify that uh, all of these what, roads here? Is I, that what I, you I think what we're do? doing now, we just want to establish a final road list. Road list. And then once we establish that, then we can decide if we want to, uh, you know, award contracts and move forward uh, as we continue. But we need to establish our road list first. Okay, but uh, we ha what, what we have here is an established in-house list. Right. So we can take a motion tonight to approve this and, and in-house list and move forward. And that was my motion with uh, the corrections, uh, take I'm out debate in Hackberry and add Division Clay and Tebow and Simpson. That's correct. And with that, I'll make that formal that motion. formal motion. And this 207 in-house design list would be accepted as is. You don't second it? Okay. He second it. Yeah. And there are no objections. So we can move forward with that one. Okay, Mr. Bob, what's next? Uh, the next is your consideration of how to move forward with the balance of the projects. 
uh, we've essentially done a uh, uh, hundred and I'm sorry we've done uh, about 2.2 million dollars in-house leaving a significant balance of work that needs to be contracted out for engineering services to actually design very similar to what we did in the 2006 uh, the size of the uh, potential contract uh, is about six million dollars remaining in the road list and I would recommend that that be separated into at least two contracts two engineering companies to design that so that we get a, uh, uh, a good sized contract that they can uh, quote get their teeth into and at the same time we have two consultants moving forward with that councilman todd lambert yeah and, and i guess the uh turn lanes we're doing a separate one also well uh, i'd like to uh, talk about the turn lanes and maybe this would be a good time to do that is that there are some uh, complications in the turn lanes in that in that they are definitely going to have to have right away you're going to uh, you're going to need uh, uh, to coordinate with the state uh, and in most cases you're going to have to have right away so uh, I think we need to be real careful about those uh, but essentially I think you could put uh, intersection improvements together you could do a road widening uh, uh, Tiggy Duplessis for example uh, is a widening project that uh, could be done but kind of looking down through there uh, you have got about 3.3 .3 million dollars so I'd recommend that maybe you do two contracts on the turn lanes now that's essentially I'm recommending two contracts for the roads themselves and two con tracks for the turn lane so that would be four contracts that we would enter into but mr bob you know we, we also took a million out of them turn lanes almost with the yes so we down but to i two needed on that. i needed that to to do all the road but i'm saying we're down to just two million on that you're uh, right and i apologize so, so yes, that sir. that really needs to go as one project it could think. be yes sir it could be it's in the range of one project now okay i, I would like to see uh i don't know about what you guys would want but you know, I would like to see a turn lane project by itself, you know, since we talked about that that's what we want, an intersection improvement uh, project going, this is a good time to start it. So I would like to see it stay that way. However, if we wanted to do it in phases, you know, that if we could award it to, to someone and, and let them come back to us as to how they're going to do it, where they could figure out which ones were going to be tougher to do and they could, you know, they could stage it like that so that they could get started on moving on it and start with the ones that they had to do. No? Is that what you? Uh, you know? Once they receive the contract, they, they move on on, on, the on different different ones as, as, they, as they wish, as they set their guidelines. So, right. And, 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 and I understand, the phase, I agree yeah. with you, ideally, I'd, We'd like to have a widening project, and we'd like a uh, process, and we'd li like to have a, a turning lane process. But, however, it's just it's really not enough to be awarding. Uh, it, it's probably just enough to award, uh, you know, one company to get on these projects uh, so that they can move forward and make worthwhile. It's doing the work uh, and mobilizing. And, and, and so for that reason, I, I'd like to see it, uh, this list right here uh, remain combined. Uh, I believe we have one widening uh, road on that, and so. Uh, Mr. Lambert, but uh, like I say, in order to get it done, however, you, however you wish uh, to do it, that would be fine. Uh, but you know, that's my wishes. Councilman Lambert, do you have a question? Uh, I got a motion. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make a motion that we uh, give this turn lane project, which is uh, I don't have the total amount since we uh, split that one road out of it but it's going to be close to 1.5 or 1.6 million uh it'll it'll be uh about 2.3 because it totals 3.3 okay. 3 now and we'll take a million out so it'll be my recommendation is that we issue this contract out to volkert and associates second i have a motion and a second to issue the turn the road improve uh, 
intersection improvement list to Volkert. Any objections? No objections. That can move to the full council. That kind of takes us back to the uh, the uh, road, the priority one roads, and we talked right. about. Uh, at least my recommendation was that you have two contractors that split that, and that would be about three, three and a half million dollar contract for each one mm -hmm. of them. Right. I'd like to make uh, a motion, I, and and as as talking with different people. Uh, it appeared that uh, people wanted to mobilize in the same general areas, and, and so that uh, they thought if they kept within a district, uh, it would be easier to do uh, projects. And it, and it appears uh, from from these numbers, uh, it, about as close to splitting it as possible, uh, if you would take uh, count, uh, Council District 4, 6, and 8 would would just about half the project uh, and I, you know I, I would recommend that uh, that we award uh, that we can modify that if, if other councilmen wish but uh, I'd like to uh, award that uh, to recommend that for PEC I'll second that I'll second my question uh, question. I would like I would like DPW to look at it and make sure that it is kind of a split. You know. I I had looked at that earlier and uh, that that is pretty close to a good split. Uh, I sure wouldn't have any objections. I do support the fact that the projects located in a general geographic area would make really good uh, sense, so that we have one uh, contractor if we start having public hearings or whatever on on individual projects that they'll be in the uh, same location, same general location. I have a motion by Kent Chesnada, uh to uh, award uh, the roads in District 4, District 6, and District 8 to PEC. And I have a second by Dempsey Landon. Are there any objections? There being no objections, and we with, will move that to the full council. And with that, I'd like to uh, recommend that we award the remaining uh, roads to GSA. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second uh, by Kent Shakespeare and uh, a second by a uh, motion by Kent Shakespeare and a second by Dempsey Lambert. Uh, I do have some discussion on, on that one. I have set up a meeting for next Monday to discuss some previous road projects that we have. And we're trying to move projects along. We have some that are still not done. And so I'm not comfortable at this time until I can get in into um till I can get into um exploring what's going on with some of these other projects. I mean we just did a major turn lane project tonight. We still have six from a project that was there since before I was elected that still are not done. So I'm, I'm looking and trying to work with people and trying to investigate and trying to find out where we're going with it. So I, I can't support this motion at this time. Uh, any other objections? I object. There are uh, two objections, so the motion fails. But I would recommend that we send it to the full council. Uh, I made that motion pending uh, the meeting to a discovery meeting that you're conducting so we can find out uh, what the problem is and we can have a report on that. Well, we'll have that report by, that's okay. what I'm just fixing to say. We will have a report on that because this is going to take place next week. So what I'm going to recommend is that even though the motion failed, we move it to the full council because at that level we can, you know, decide uh, what Very we right. need to do at that point. That's <coughs> Is that fair? No, Madam Chairman, it's not fair. I have a comment. Uh, we have an administration here. We in a dire need of moving these projects on forward. Councilman Shake's not a, we split this project right down the middle. I don't see a problem with it. We just moved it forward, Mr. Lambert. 
We well, it should be a full, 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 full uh, approval. It should be full, full approval. We'll I, bring it. We'll bring I it to the council. We'll bring it to the council, and let the council, as a body, decide this, because I am working on trying to. You, you're talking about moving projects forward. I'm trying to get past projects completed. And that's where I'm focused right now. And I've set up meetings with the proper people to deal with that. And we will have that information by the time we meet again. Yes. I'm going to offer a substitute motion so we'll have something to move on at the next council meeting one way or another, depending on how the council see it, that we uh, also offer Evans and Grave the second half of this project. We have a substitute motion. Is there any second? There is no second. So just bring it forward uh, to the full council. We'll have more information at that time. Rather than having to come back to the committee, this keeps the process moving. Yes, we'll move forward. Thank you. Item L? Uh, yes. Uh, Thank you very much. That that was uh, a, a big hurdle to get over. It was a very difficult, and I I certainly appreciate the your patience and your input and, and your consideration on all of those projects. We are committed in public works to moving uh, these forward, and uh, we will stay on top of them, and hopefully uh, by doing some in-house work, by having the work spread out, uh, I think you're going to be pleased with how we're going to perform in the next year or so. With that, item uh, 8I is the private roads that are to be considered into the parish system. If you will recall, we took in a number of private roads uh, uh, not too long ago. And of those, there were some that we needed to look at in a little more detail. I think there were five of them that, that we were asking you to allow us to uh, come back to you with some recommendations, and we, we're doing that tonight. And the list includes Tammy Road Extension, which is a part of the uh, current accepted Tammy Road, and it's an extension to the dead end. Uh, it has it's uh, 640 feet. Uh, 300 feet of that is already in the parish, so we're talking about an additional 340-foot extension. The right-of-way is 40-foot uh, wide. The width of the roadbed is 40 feet. There are five houses on it. Uh, I'm sorry, four houses. The dilemma that I have with that one, it's... it's uh, one that you may want to uh, consider, and it's it's uh, kind of a little tough for me to give a recommendation on that. On one hand, I think that the four houses and the right of way and the roadbed width is adequate to to go forward with it, and and the other is that uh, uh, clearly the ungraveled extension area is is really not developed, and and there's nothing down there, so I'm concerned about that portion of it so um, I guess what I'm really saying is that if you uh, would want to do that when I would recommend that we only do the 416 16 feet of uh, extension that's currently gravel and not the there's an additional 220 some odd feet that that's grassland if you will I make the motion that we go with Second. DPW's recommendation Yes, let's take them one at a time. One at a time? Okay. There's a motion to accept the 416 uh, feet of extension, gravel extension, uh, as approved by DPW. There's a motion by Kent Shakespeare and a second by Todd Lambert. Any objections? What? Discussion. Discussion. Uh, one of the things that we didn't discuss uh, the last time was uh, uh, opinion of the Planning and Zoning uh, co Committee Commission, and uh, I was just curious to see that these roads went uh, usually the process they go through planning and zoning, and then they come to us. What was the recommendation by 
planning and zoning? These did not go to planning and zoning. Normally your planning and zoning or your subdivision uh, uh, process which goes through a approval process of uh, uh, the subdivision is no, Mr. Ron. The, these uh, also are supposed to go there, but all, all, all roads are supposed to go through. Well, planning I, and, and then I then I withdraw this item because I did not take it to planning and zoning. If I need to, I I, and I back could, up. And could we get a clarification? Uh, we've got the the uh, chairman here, uh, Michael. Could you uh, just give us a review on on how we do roads with planning and zoning? There are, right now we still have a certain number of roads, I believe, in the parish that, that have been in existence before, 90, was it 94? Mm -hmm. So those roads would automatically come in, they wouldn't have to go before planning and zoning. <clears throat> the roads that do come before planning and zoning, and I, I don't have a list of the, the roads that they've been looking at, so I don't know the when the roads were created, but uh, I, think, I think all of you have gotten a copy of a document that uh, Ricky Babin uh, created several years ago and it created a, or established a criteria which the commission uses to accept or deny a road or send a recommendation to the council to accept or deny a road. Uh, now recently, I, we haven't seen any roads coming before, so I don't know um, what, what the, the process has been for reviewing these roads that you've been accepting. Um, I, I believe there was one it came to us, and we at that time I think we made a motion to deny. We sent a recommendation to deny. A year or two years ago, it came before or it came to this committee. I, I don't know what happened with it. Uh, that's the last one I can remember right off the top of my head. We haven't really been seeing a lot of roads coming to us. Well, and and, and I would just like to be able to have, whenever the planning commission does make a recommendation, that we would. We would get the recommendation uh, on that because uh, it, it is part of the process, and so we just want to be able to have that. Uh, uh, Madam Chairman, Mr. Sigler wanted to com comment. I was going to say the short, the short version is if it's after that date, 94, they do go through planning and zoning. But if they're prior to that date, 94, they do not. They come straight through. All right, and these right here, do they? Are they Let's pre ninety four? Let's send it back because I think it's confusing. We, well, therefore, I would recommend that we send it back and you give it to us, Mr. Bob, next, next month meeting. with with the background information and. Uh, it needs to be further researched and, and, and contact uh, planning to see if it qualifies. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank we you. will we will come back to you uh, with that. I and I apologize because uh, I was under the impression that. Council wanted to hear these directly themselves, and and uh, that's the reason that I brought these to you. Okay. The uh, next item, item 8M, is the subdivision roads that to be accepted for maintenance into the uh, uh, parish system, and those are those that are have went through the sub, uh, planning commission, have been improved according to uh, standards and have been improved by our inspectors. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I think uh, I need to read those. Yeah, just wait, to wait, wait, yeah. we, we just discovered something. Okay. Uh, Oak, Plaza, uh, Oak Plaza Avenue, 962 feet. Conifer Drive, 2,730 feet. Centrus Drive, 362 feet. We'd recommend those be accepted. Mr. Bob, I see some writing here in red that uh, on this uh, Oak Plaza Avenue. Many areas of the curbs is broken on this road. That will need to be repaired before we can accept the road into the parish system. Uh, I'm going to let uh, Mr. Uh, Ricky explain that because he's the one that wrote it. Okay, thank you. That's been taken care of, Todd. That's been we, fixed. we pulled a bond and we held a bond on the... This, if you look on the date, it was done back in April. Okay. The bond was pulled at that time because okay. they had some problems. All the problems have been, been taken fixed. care of. Yeah. Thank you. So we have a motion. Mo motion. Motion and second. Motion by Todd Lambert and second by Kent Shakes in order to accept these roads into the uh, system. Any objections? No objections to the full council. Thank you, ma'am. 
The last item is to enter into a task order contract with Volker and Associates so moved, an engineering Madam firm Chairman. Uh, through the balance Second. of 2007. I have a motion to accept Volker and Associates a contract with them to, uh, for a task order and a second by uh, Councilman Shakespeare. Any objections? Mo no objections motion to the adjourned. full council. Second. Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>